Good morning, this is Kelloland on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. Police have arrested a suspect in connection with Friday's deadly shooting in Rapid City. 21-year-old Luke Birch is in the Pennington County Jail charged with first-degree murder. Officers responded to the 4500 block of Candlewood Place late Friday afternoon for a report of gunshots. Officers found the body of a man with a gunshot wound. Police say Birch knew the victim. A man from T will serve more than a decade behind bars for dealing meth. A judge has sentenced 44-year-old Nicholas Gansky to 10 years and 10 months in federal prison after pleading guilty last fall to conspiracy to distribute a sub controlled substance. Prosecutors say Gansky, along with his co-conspirators, were responsible for distributing 500 grams or more of meth in South Dakota. They say Gansky would meet a co-conspirator to purchase the drugs and then sell to others in the Sioux Falls area. Gansky also faces five years of supervised release once he's out of prison and has to pay $100 to the Federal Crime Victims Fund. New this morning, investigators in Sioux Falls are looking into what sparked a fire in the southwest part of the city. Officials say it happened just after 2 o'clock this morning in the 2000 block of West Johnson Place. Our Kelloland news crew was able to capture this video of the scene. Firefighters were able to put the fire out in 15 minutes. No one was hurt. Now let's get a check of our weather with meteorologist Scott Munt. Going to be a warm start to the work week, Scott. Yeah, possibly uh, setting records in parts of eastern and southeastern Kelloland. We'll have our sunshine. We'll have Numbers probably in the 70s. Some of us may touch 80 today in the southeast. A little cooler western, central, and northern Kelloland, but hey, still in the 60s for highs. 68 are going high in Pierce, 66 Aberdeen, 64 in Rapid City, and then you see the heat in the east and southeast with highs in the 70s. More details on your forecast with Brian coming up. Thank you, Scott. Well, even though temperatures are warming up, it's still too early for a dip in the outdoor pools. But the city of Sioux Falls is already planning for crowds looking to cool off in the summer heat. Parks and Rec is hiring lifeguards and other pool staff ahead of opening day, which is scheduled for May 31st. Landing a lifeguard job requires earning certification. I have a lot of returners that came back from last summer that want to work for us again this summer that are already certified. but. You know, you get a, you, the other half are our kids that are new to the job. Other pool related jobs include cashiers and swimming lesson instructors. To apply for a pool job or browse other opportunities, head to this story on Kelloland.com. The Summit League basketball tournament quarterfinals have officially wrapped up. Kelloland's Anya Joseph previews what we can expect in the semifinals. The Women's State U rivalry will make its way to the Premier Center as the two teams will go head to head in the semifinals. Just two years ago, the USD women made an appearance to the NCAA Sweet 16. And last season, looking to make a return, they did not get past the quarterfinals of the Summit League tournament. This season, as the Yotes advance to the semis, they make it their mission to have a different outcome with a new group that now has experience under their belt. Now it's different. They, they're, they're a young group as far as experience goes, and so the win says a lot. You know, it just builds so much confidence. You step out on the floor tomorrow, you already feel different than you did today. Both teams will tip off the semifinals at 12.30 p.m. Reporting in Sioux Falls, Anya Joseph, Kelloland Sports. A 10-year-old Girl Scout from Huron learned a new language to help community members feel welcomed. Before Cassidy Lawton learned Spanish, she and her mom would put out a sign with translations of the Girl Scout cookies. Now she is able to have discussions with her customers. She says she loves selling cookies for her troop and wanted to make others feel included. English I use at first because I don't want to like to offend them. So I say that first and they're, if they like don't understand me, I'll say it and then they start smiling and laughing. In the last three years, she's personally sold more than 6,000 boxes of cookies. She and her troop have raised thousands of dollars which go back to first responders and the military. Let's look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Carstens. Brian? All right, so weather headlines today. Well, obviously very warm, very mild, record breaking or tying in Sioux Falls. But with that comes this, a red flag warning in effect. So fire danger very high 
Humidity plays a role. It's going to be way low today, well below 20 percent. Could be as low as maybe 9 or 10 percent humidity in Sioux Falls later today. So anything close to that is way too dry. And obviously with any amount of wind, it just all adds up. So be careful on that uh, note here. Let's look at the numbers on Futurecast. And it doesn't take long to warm into the 60s by your lunch hour. And then, of course, now we've got to get used to the new time change. So, you know, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, we're sitting there right there about the peak of the heating of the day. 78 in Yankton this afternoon, very close to 80, about 70 there in Chamberlain. One of the warmest days we've had so far this spring. Obviously, Sioux Falls certainly would be in that category. Tomorrow will not be quite as warm. We do have a cold front that's coming into the picture, and that's going to trim our highs a few degrees. I wouldn't say any drastic cooling here, but uh, with lighter winds, too. We also see a couple of sprinkles trying to develop in north central South Dakota early tomorrow morning. This system, though, is pretty much moisture starved. So it's going to be a front. It'll kind of shift the wind back around to the east a little bit. There's some sample numbers at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. 65 to 70 will cover a lot of real estate here in central and southeastern Kettleland. And then the pattern beginning to break down a little bit more, getting into Wednesday and Thursday. Let's take a closer look at that. As you see, there's our first frontal boundary tomorrow, kind of draped there along the Nebraska-South Dakota border. And then we've got a, a larger parent low down to our south. West. Now that's going to help to open up some Gulf moisture. There's some chances here for a rain shower Wednesday. One thing I want to be careful about though as we examine this is how much of this is going to go north. There's still some debate on this and the data is not conclusive that all of this is going to move north into southern South Dakota. I think Nebraska, I think Iowa looks pretty good uh, for some, some rainfall here, probably a little bit of a mix in some of that as temperatures cool off into Thursday. My main question would be some of this forcing coming in from the north and how that's going to affect the placement of this shield of rain. I know that looks optimistic. There's, uh, you know, some data pushing that north. I don't want to discount it, but I also want to say we're here on a Monday, and that's a Thursday forecast, so we still have a little time to sort that out. If we go with the more optimistic version of that, you bet, that's a half an inch to an inch of rain. That would make a difference, wouldn't it, in the month of March? That's a, a big percentage of what we typically would expect in this month. I think Sioux Falls averages about 1.6 for the entire month. But you got to remember, too, models such as this. This is the European model, the AI version of that. And there's some other things, too. I'm not going to show all of it, but see how Nebraska and Iowa, more in the blue and the yellows, that's where your heavier moisture would be tallied there. So we're going to continue to watch that in the Storm Center. We'll have updates later today. 75 Sioux Falls for a high, 73 in Chamberlain. 64 in Rapid City. Here's your seven-day forecast. 50-degree weather by Thursday and Friday. I would say even by the weekend, once that system passes through, whatever it decides to deliver for rain, it's going to cool off. We're going to be in the 40s. And, uh, yeah, that's actually below average by the end of the seven-day forecast. Aberdeen is also going in reverse, cooling down day by day. The rain chances are there. They're not as high as Sioux Falls, given the track of that system. But, nevertheless, there could be some moisture. And I would settle right now, Pier and Rapid City, probably at least a 30% chance of rain in that forecast window. Rapid City may be a little higher. But it's definitely not warming up. We're going to start going the other direction most of the seven-day forecast. Check us out with details online at kettleland.com.